All right, here we go. The first map is going to be on Royal Blood, and I'm really excited for this. I do have to say, this Serral portrait over here is freaking vicious, right? Like, it absolutely... If I've played against that, if I played against Serral in particular using that portrait, I'd be freaking terrified. Now, before I talk about my Patreon incentive, let me introduce the players. I think it's probably not necessary for most of you, but Serral... Uh, most people think he's the greatest player of all time, multiple world championship. I think he... I mean, I don't think I have to think. It's <laughs> I don't think I have to think. I'm sure he has the most Premier Tournament victories ever out of anyone. I want to guess it's probably like 20 at this point. And Clem. Ooh, this is cool already. Expanding on the low ground. Cool move. Clem is... He struggles a little bit internationally sometimes, but in European domestic tournaments, he is actually the best. You guys might not expect this, but in the recent uh, format of the ESL Master, so uh, the last three years... Clem has, I believe, as many European championships as Serral and Rainer combined, the last couple of world champions. So that is uh, very, very crazy. Clem is an absolute TVZ demon, potentially the best TVZ player in the world. But for now, in the top right, playing for Team Basculus, it's Serral. But I haven't observed in ages. Do I still know how to do this? Hey, he's doing... Uh Oh, no, he's not doing the build. In my videos, I've been hyping up the new Eric build, the 1515 new Awesome Zerg opener. But this is just a regular pull first. And in the bottom left, we have Clem playing for Team Liquid, of course. Dude, I, I was going to look for the Liquid logo, but the first thing I saw was this freaking paw. I think this might be like a polar bear paw or something because that's what his Discord profile picture is. Wait, dude, Clem, a man of my heart. He's playing freaking 3 Rex Reaper. No way. This is He's going full you thermal style. I don't think I really see him do this very often. Man, Clem, whenever I have him on for a show match, the last time was actually in the 25k sub-special. At this point, we're almost at 100. Time flies. But even now, he doesn't have to, by the way. He still plays 3 Rex Reaper, which is cool. And Sarah over here going for the pool first. So I would say this is a pretty nice opener for Clem already. Now, yeah, this is the biggest thing. Sometimes you can do 3 Rex Reaper. And wall off in the main base, right? Then I don't even think it's that amazing. But here, if you wall off in the natural, the thing is the links, they usually go around to dodge the Reaper. Uh, in this case, they're not going to, it seems like. Probably because he scouted the wall off, right? Yeah, Serral scouted the wall off and decided to not go for it. That's the thing. You can run links around, but they can't get in if there's a, a wall there. Now, Serral does have the option to go for a super fast Roach Warren, which is exactly what he does. And this is going to be scary. Um, I, I want to say that I am probably the biggest master of 3 Rex Reaper. Like, I'm not quite as good at the game as Clem, but I know how to play my 3 Rex Reaper. And I would say this is a decent situation for Clem still. You could think Clem needs to do damage. Serral's already, ma already making roaches, not looking that great. But in my experience, you can totally win from these positions. Like, you... It's, it's, it plays a little bit different. You might need to make some bunkers at home and stuff. And here, Clem going for a very fast... Ooh, wait, is he going to go for just a bunch of Marauders? <gasps> no way, dude. He's playing so cool right now. I was going to say, normally what you do is you stop at like seven Reapers. You get a bunker up in the natural. And then you just kind of buy time. You make some units. But Clem here seems to be going for just a bunch of Marauders. Maybe even going to make concussive shells. Let's see. So that's Marauder number one. He can't afford Marauder number two. Yeah, that's a little bit of a shame. Now, I do believe it's about... It's eight roaches. Okay, I was going to say seven, but it's even eight roaches. Yeah, it's going to be tough to deal with, but if he gets Marauders out, uh, then who knows, right? So what Clem wants to do now is throw grenades over and over to, to stall the roaches. Exactly like this. Oh, that's perfect, Michael. That's exactly what you want to do. I should show this to my students when they ask Reaper Michael. You just throw one grenade, get the roaches back, and then you get damage while the roaches are kind of trying to micro out of it. Now, Ravagers are a little bit harder to deal with because they have longer range and they're faster, but Clem... Bought a perfect amount of time to get the bunker up. He has a Marauder. And now, I think this is really kind of awkward for Serral. Because Serral hasn't been making that many drones. You can see in the bottom, he has 20 drones. That is uh, not quite enough to play a macro game from. Unless he gets more damage. Now, he does have Ravagers. But Clem, going for the double tech lab, already has three Marauders out with concussive shells. So, I don't know, guys. I'm kind of like it for Clem. But Serral is going to try to break him right now. And that's exactly what he has to do. He does have a lot of Ravagers. Oh, the bunkers are going to stay alive. The, oh, the bunker does fall. Okay, that is potentially problematic here. Please target that 1 HP Ravager. Okay, thank you. Now, this is the big problem with Marauders, guys. Marauders do a lot of damage against armored. Their DPS against non-armored is not that great, and Ravagers are not armored, but to me, it looks like Clem just has more than enough units. Now, if you look at the SCV count, Serral's going up to 35, and Clem only has 20, so the economy kind of shifted, and... In the end, it's pretty hard to say who this was good for, you know. This Ravager probably should have been cancelled. That's a little bit of a mistake from Serral. Something that you don't get to say very often, so I'm taking the opportunity well I can, and that's awesome. Now, we do not see a third hatcher yet by Serral. I did see a click there, so I imagine a drone is on the way. Let's see, there's only two queens. This is... 
it's pretty tough to call here because Clem has a... I uh, hope I typed her an accent. Well, it doesn't matter. No one else is observing. Clem has... It's a decent army. It's kind of a weird group of units, but the thing here is there's no Zergling speed. The reason why you can't do these move-outs typically is because a swarm of Zergling just kills it if you don't have medifacts. But here, there's no Zergling speed. There's not that many queens, only two queens out. Serral didn't want to spend his money on queens, and now he's going to have to wait for Zerglings to come out. I think this is still going to be fine for Serral because Marauders, like I said, they're only really good against armored stuff, and Serral is going to be able to make enough Zerglings. So this is forcing him uh, to make a million Zerglings already, and that is not what he wants to do he wants to be droning right now so i would say even if clem is going to get cleaned up at some point it's still a fantastic move by him and the micro here is crazy by the way right just look at the kiting hasn't even lost i thought he was going to lose that one as i said i haven't even lost some rotter yet he's going to kill a queen too and sarah has to make so many freaking zerglings if you look at the units lost right now i think clem just caught back up by like a thousand just killing all these units now he's losing drones too and i'm not gonna lie this feels like the most random move ever but this is the kind of things you can do if you have clem's skill now sarah yeah needs to be careful to not lose these drones he canceled his third hatch so he can afford more zerglings oh my god what a move i you know, I kind of undersold it. I really think it was going to be that magnificent. But in the end, Clem gets a massive advantage from this. There's no third base. Aspire is on the way. But at the same time, Clem is on three barracks. Already getting up a starport. And these units are still alive. What are the resources lost there? I mean, it's 700 only. You would think it's going to be even worse. Now, for a second there, Sarah started Barrow. Decides not to go for it. And now, uh, yeah, he is, he is about to have 10 Zerklings. I guess he can hope to get into the natural. But Clem has enough units waiting for him. And now Clem sees the Overseer. This is important because an overseer is usually a sign of well it's a sign of a lair but if it's fast it's a sign that it's probably going to be either a nidus or a spire now i really doubt clem is going to be expecting a nidus here because he just killed quite literally all of Serral's units right so he's going to be expecting mutants um unless he thinks wait well i do have to say this guys clem i believe did not look for the third base recently so there is a chance Clem thinks the third base is right here. I think his units were in range of this one, but he could think the third base is right there. Maybe Clem doesn't realize quite how far ahead he is. Now, what you can very clearly see what Serral's doing here. He's not making any more queens. He's not really uh, making any more drones. As always, making links. He's going to make mutas. What Serral's going to do here, this is his last hope to win the game as well, by the way, is he's going to make a bunch of mutas and try to grab these medivacs. Even if Clem decides to go back with the drop, this is his game plan. He's going to try to jump on the army when he moves out there early. And beyond that, uh, I think... The, oh, no, sorry for the... I, I'm a bit rusty with the observing, guys. I'll get there throughout this best of seven, I promise. That was not really best of seven. Seven maps, I should say. Uh, but yeah, that is really the last of Serral's hopes here. Let me try to observe the medevac. There we go. Double eBay coming out already. I mean, Clem doesn't seem to know this is an all-in. That's the only hope here. He has enough Mutalist to kill the Metafax. Oh, he doesn't have enough Zerglings, though. Like, this is a pretty tragic Zergling count. Clem targeting the Mutas as well. Three, four Mutas already going down. Serral GG's. And that is it for game number one. Game number two is going to be on Grass Fan. And I do have to say, I'm personally very surprised with how that game played out. I was thinking, these guys, they're probably going to want to warm up with a nice macro gamer. And I'll uh, get to talk about my Patreon incentives and my new project. And maybe even the statistics. I did, I did do my caster job, guys. I looked up the statistics between these guys. Um, now, I guess, first of all, let's introduce them so I can get to it. In the top left, losing in the first game to some cheeky Euthermal Mass Reaper strats. It's Serral playing for Team Basilisk. Oh, that's a cool logo, actually. Looks, it looks cooler than you would think from a logo in the game. It's like kind of transparent and stuff. Not bad, Basil. It's not bad. And in the bottom right, playing for Team Liquid, it's Clem. Playing like me. That's why he won, of course. Uh, but anyway. Wait, what is this? Huh? This is weird. Dude, Cle Clem, Clem is going full psycho mode, I think. I'm not going to get to talk about this stuff at all. Or maybe I should do it fast. So he, first of all, I thought, when, when I, as soon as I saw the low ground depot, I thought, okay, it's not our 3-Rex Reaper. He vibed with it. Why not again? But... If, like, what is this even doing? He's gonna proxy another barracks, I suppose, but w what is the point of this, you know? Uh, I mean, he's not playing against the pool first. That's definitely gonna help him. So now the barracks is gonna come down, I suppose, right? The barracks goes down. Uh, I mean, the Overlord is definitely not gonna see that. It it's, it's a pretty interesting way to proxy, by the way, because if the Overlord would just go straight down, he would see it. Now, usually you can check the waypoints by the Overlord. Sero, um, Sero is playing against Clem. When you play against these really high-level players that you know, you don't necessarily play against Terran anymore. You play against a specific opponent. Clem 
doesn't really cheese. Clem is an absolute macro beast, and most Terrans that are at the top, they love doing a proxy racks now and then. Clem doesn't really do those things. Clem plays very standard, so you can tell uh, Serral's not even really scouting for a proxy racks at all. Normally, maybe. If, I, if he was playing against me, guaranteed he would scout here, but against Clem, he isn't. Now, this build got me very curious, guys. This is a cheese slash proxy that I have never done. This is a build you do against Terran. Like, against Terran, it makes sense. If your opponent's playing a Reaper Expand, you have this proxy here. What you usually do is you wall off your main base when you do that. You show up with two Reapers when your opponent only has one. You kill the Reaper, you win the game. It's very simple. But here, he's going to go up against the Queen. I mean, he's going to get an incredibly fast second Reaper. And he's still going to be able to expand. Dude, this build is freaking cool. He's going to expand fast. And he's going to try to basically just terror... Yeah, what are these guys doing? They're going full Psycho mode, I think. Is he, he's going to take the forward hatch... I mean, it's not that far away. It makes sense, but he's getting... Uh, yeah, I don't even know how to call this cheese. He's not playing like me anymore. He's, play he's going full Clem now, and this is what I mean. The queen is not out yet. Serral's probably really surprised. This is two super, super fast Reapers, and he's trying to run his drones around. So far, he hasn't lost much. The queen is going to finish now, uh, and from this point on, it's going to be a lot harder for Clem to do damage, but he did hit pretty hard at the start. So far, not that much was lost. Oh, yeah, zero workers, actually. He killed the Zerglings, but zero workers. Serral's making more, and now he's taking this hatchery, which I think Clem, yeah, barely doesn't see there with the range. Oh, my goodness. Dude, this, this is getting really funky is he gonna try to do a roach all in from that or i'm not quite sure what's going on here guys uh, I, I imagine at some point they're gonna let me talk about my cool statistics that i prepared and whatnot now i do have to say Serral has a slightly faster link speed than normal and link speed is what you want when defending this kind of things now Serral needs to be very careful here to not make uh, too many drones like he might think this is another three racks reaper but in reality it's only two if okay he reads it perfect okay i, I was getting a little bit worried there because i only saw zerglings in the production but now he's making five more drones he realized he was not quite as committed of an attack as in the first game uh, and it's going to be a lot better i i, I actually would have liked it if this barracks went to scout by the way i know it would be a little bit silly against zerg as well to scout but it, it feels very frustrating just have like this massive building that's going to take five years to die to a queen just flying over the bases over and over over. But Clem's follow-up looking very clean. He's making a bunker because he saw Serral make a lot of Zerglings, and now it looks like we're finally gonna calm down. Uh, I mean, we're 3 minutes 54 in the game, and we have a flying barracks over here, a, a, a hatchery over here in the middle of the map chilling. Now, wait. I, I think I kind of get this. I heard Serral talk in an interview, and I think this was when he... I think this was when he beat Clem, but he lost on this map. And he was kind of complaining about this base. Because if you take this base later on, like let's say as your fifth base, you can see each tanks behind this and it's really hard to take. So he's probably trying to mine it out faster so he doesn't struggle in the late game. That is an incredibly cool idea. And actually, uh, this, this is something that I find important to note as well. So we, uh, let's uh, make sure to follow these Reapers and Hellions because they might, might do some serious damage. Um, but this is important to know. I talked about this recently in my stream and people always talk about creative players who's the most creative player all oh, these links are gonna catch the hellions and the reapers oh he didn't expect it zero made extra links early on with the two extra hellions i think he's gonna yeah he's gonna survive just fine i think he lost one heli and one reaper but i think even though zero is known as a macro beast he is potentially the best late game player in the world if anything second behind maru but potentially the best late game player in the world I also think he's one of the most creative because he really finds solutions to new problems really fast. I could invent a new insane build that Zerg struggled with for two months, but Serral, he's always the first with the solution. And this is also a very creative solution to, you know, you, you kind of suffer a little bit early on. Like the third is a bit harder to take perhaps, or the third here is a bit harder to defend and then the fourth is harder to take. But if you mine this out earlier, you're going to have the resources and not have to worry about it in the late game. And your creep is going to be really fast because you started from this point. This is awesome. Him, and he's keeping all of his queens here to defend. Now, on the other side, Clem is going for two really fast medivacs. This is the standard follow-up, by the way, to any kind of two racks reaper, three racks reaper play. You don't just want to go into a third. I mean, I do. You guys have seen me play. I'm just, I'm just a little bit crazy with it, so I'll just make a third base and make 10 more barracks and make reapers right but that is not what clem's gonna do here clem's gonna be a little bit more sane than that he's gonna go straight up to two medivacs and now serral's gonna have to deal with this though does he have enough queens for it he has eight queens it should be enough i think to deal with it he's gonna get supply block momentarily though so that could be a problem though he already did spend his larva one one is faster for serral that's gonna come into play later but even though this move was very cool is he gonna be able to defend this i don't know quite how well the marines can hit this base 
Yeah, it, it doesn't look like they can hit it that well, right? Now, I, I think I'm going to stop using the follow command. I keep stopping it, but it just doesn't seem to quite work out that well. I'm just going to observe myself. That wind of mine fires. He's going in with the Ling. Okay, I... I kind of think Clem could have fought that, maybe. Maybe I'm overconfident in my Marines, or maybe I'm just overconfident in Clem. I kind of thought he could have fought that. But now Serral's going up to this fourth base. And I think now we're finally going to get a little bit of peace. There's a spine crawler finishing. That's a really cool move. And in the end, I mean, he did lose six drones, so that's rough. Now, yeah, I was going to say, maybe I'll get some time to talk about statistics and stuff, but... <laughs> Clem just doesn't stop attacking, you know? Like, I know him. Look at the, look at the minimap, guys. You can just see the units just streaming across uh, this... This looks a little awkward. Like, I'm not sure if his unit... If he makes Thors later, they might get stuck. But here Clem goes. He's stimming on top of the Queens. Sarah has a lot of links, and he has the upgraded advantage, but he doesn't have the 1-1 one -one yet. So the links are not going to be that great. Combat Shield finishes, and this is looking very rough for Sarah, guys. I think Clem might take a super, super fast 2-0 lead. And, oh my goodness, it's starting to look rough for Sarah, guys. Very fast 2-0 in even 15 minutes. And Sarah's going to have to find a way to climb back. Right, game three is on Ancient Cistern, and this is the map where I expect Serral to bounce back. So for now, I'm going to ignore the early game and just talk about the stuff I want to talk about. So one thing that's very important is that... Let me put the score here. Um, <laughs> is that Serral, the last time they played, Serral was down 2-0, and then he ended up winning 3-2. So I think uh, this is even more maps, right? So I think Serral could totally still win the series here. But this is, this is a pretty good Zerg map, and this is where he's going to have to make his comeback, I think. In the bottom left for Team Basilisk, it's Serral. And then the top right playing for Team Liquid, it's Clem. With his beautiful polar bear paw. Now, what I wanted to talk about is that I checked out their statistics and a lot of people might think Cero has like a really big lead being like, you know, pretty much the GOAT and all that. But I checked since 2020 and since 2020, they are very close. Since Clem kind of rise up, Cero was still better at the time, but Clem was climbing up into the scene. Um, Cero has a 55% win rate. Now, a lot of that is also recent. In recent times, Serral's had a pretty good time against Clem. So if you take away the last year, then Clem suddenly has the lead with 55% win rate. So it's very back and forth. It's very close. And yeah, I, I can't imagine. I mean, you guys are probably thinking, oh, it's going to be a 7-0. It is a 7-0. Well, I was going to say I'll eat my ear. I'll, I'll probably not do that, but that would be freaking insane. Now, let's talk about the initiative, guys. So the big thing here that I'm going to promote is... I talked about it a few times in some videos, I think. I've been wanting to do $1,000 monthly tournaments in cool formats to help the pro scene. The StarCraft 2 pro scene is not quite what it used to be. And yeah, most of it is like Blizzard kind of dropping funding and all that. And I, I still think there's a lot of pros. There's a lot of people that are trying to do their best in the scene, make money and stuff. And I would love to help with that. So I wanted to do $1,000 monthly tournaments. And I'm going to be using my Patreon for that. So if you guys are excited to help these guys, um, help all other pros, all grandmasters, try to make some bucks, check out my Patreon, support me. I also recently added that educational tier. So if you go 15 plus, you also get the weekly educational videos. Even if you're just there to support, I guess it's nice as well. And for the winner, of this i'll also give them a bonus based on how many people join the patreon you can find the link in the description if i don't forget i'll put it on the top of the description but sometimes i forget that so it should be under like the support me tag or something but realistically you're mostly going to be supporting these players so i can i wanted to host like thousand dollar ffas thousand dollar 3v3 tournaments and stuff could be even more depending on the patreon support of course um but yeah i will see and for now Clement Serral, since they're so good... Oh, the Reaper's here, I believe. Let's look at the Reaper. Uh, since they're so good, they don't necessarily need the support, but I thought this would be a freaking awesome show match. I always love having these guys on my channel. Clem against the laser was awesome last time. And now we have Clem against Serral. And I think it would be awesome promotion to let the pros know that watching the Grandmasters that they couldn't apply to join my tournaments. Um, and for you to know to, you know, get the promotion out there, get the word out there, and help you guys support these players. Now, Clem is, for the first time, doing a normal build. He is going for a fast third command center. If you think this is on the greedy side, it's not. I always like to explain this because it's confusing. Only one gas, only has one marine at home. Isn't this really greedy? This is actually standard. This is the normal way to play against Zerg. Hellions can defend any amount of Zerg links. And never mind, there's a starport proxy in the corner of the map. I mean, it's still pretty normal, right? Uh, <laughs> pretty standard, I should say. I mean, I do get it, though. The thing is, Serral is an absolute macro god. I think no one really wants to play Serral in a standard 
macro game. And I don't mean that Clem can't handle him in macro games. I just think if he lets him alone and doesn't do anything, Serral is going to take the upper hand. So what Clem is doing, uh, I feel like in these last two games, he wasn't necessarily trying to end the game. It just kind of happened, right? Uh, but he is going for that aggressive play to make it a little bit harder on Serral. Now, one thing I would really like to see from Serral in this series is he started using the newly popularized zerg opener by brazilian zerg eric and i thought it was really awesome the last time these guys played these guys played Cyril had an absolutely amazing beautiful master class where he just he was roach dropping every base and he was overlord dropping queens and putting creep all over the place and he was freaking awesome that's what i would like to see from Cyril. i don't know if he wants to do it again against clem because he you know he has used it before but that would be very very cool now this is kind of tough to make happen against players like Serral because he, he just has Overlord vision everywhere. Serral is going to see this instantly. Overlord number one, Overlord number two. Oh, the queens are in the main. Let's see how many Zerglings are available. He has 14 links and this is only four Hellions. Now he needs to micro these Zerglings perfectly. Clem is using the Spore for terrain, but it ended up working the wrong way because Serral had more Zerglings than he thought and then the Spore did a little damage on this Medivac. And so far, yeah, I mean... It's not quite disastrous, but it's a pretty rough opener for Clem. When you don't do damage against Zerg, especially when you do a dedicated proxy like that, it's it's tough. And th wait, that's... I didn't even know that, guys. The paw is on the top of the starport. I don't think I've ever noticed that. The decal is on the top of these buildings. How did I... Or is it just... Oh, look, it's so small. Look at the factory. It's like right here. You, you can actually not see it from this angle. It's like very hard to see. Oh, wow. I never knew that, actually. That's so cool. God, I really should pay more attention to detail. I noticed this recently. I, uh, I started trying out this new RTS. You guys have been spamming me to try it. So I started trying beyond all reason. I've been having a pretty good time, by the way. I might make a video on that. Uh, but I showed it to my girlfriend. And she started noting all the small details that I didn't notice. And I was like, man, I really... I don't think I have eyes. Like, how do I not notice all these things? Like, she noticed that the, the robots in that game leave behind, like, really cool fitting footprints. And it's it's it's, it's honestly pretty obvious, but I just never noticed. Now, Sarah trying to scout here, but an overlord, but it is getting denied. And overall, I mean, Clem's follow-up does look pretty clean. I would say we're going to head into a very standard macro game here with Sarah in the lead, of course. Upgrades are looking very even, judging by the production tab. And, ooh, a macro hatch. Okay, so he's going to go up to five hatcheries already. And this is a very big advantage of defending easily in the early game. Like, I'm not trying to dunk on Clef for not harassing well, of course. But if you have to struggle in the early game, if you're scared, typically you have to make a bailing nest way faster. Serral did this all without a bailing nest, so he has so much creep. He has so much everything he has so many drones so many bages so many hatcheries and yeah it's 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 looking a little bit rough for clem but i've seen clem perform absolute miracles especially in the late game i wouldn't mind like a nice big late game ghost banger as well now this move is a move i i it's, it's really good against players like me so i hate this move i'm tempted to say it's good against everyone but i think it's in particular good against players like uh, like Clem, who like to attack with everything. Typically, they don't keep enough units at home. This time, he did. Now, Serral's jumping in the army, but he needs to use these transfusions on the queens. Okay, there we go. He starts using them. And Clem, very, very good at targeting those queens, by the way. Actually gets two of them. Any defense at home with the Hellions. And now, yeah, I wouldn't say it's completely evened up, but Clem definitely climbing back into the game a little bit. Now, the next thing that's going to be very uh, interesting to see is what tech Serral's going to go for. Look at this, by the way. This is actually very cool. I feel like when I play Zerg, You'll notice my queens, slowly they gather energy. If you guys don't know how it works exactly, queens take 24 seconds um, to be able to inject again. And the injects take 25. So if you inject perfectly, like quite literally perfectly, like robot level, you would have zero energy. But I think it's awesome to see how low energy these queens are all the time by Serral. Like he's so good. Look at it. He's 25 energy. And this queen has been here since the start of the game. He he was one second delayed on these injects. Now he's missing it because he's brawling in the middle of the map. But that's just something I want to highlight. Super, super cool. And Serral being very active with these Zerglings. Like he really is trying to catch these Marines over and over. Now Clem also attacking here on the bottom side. Fifth hatchery or, or sixth hatchery even already done by Serral, one of those being a macro hatch. And look at the micro here. Micro by both players, awesome. Retargeting the mine on the queen. Uh, well, Serral was trying to bait it with his Urkling. Now he's still trying actively to grab the units on the top. They both have 1-1 one, one now. At the same time, macroing perfectly, of course. Look at the upgrade timing by Serral. Even got a little bit ahead of Clem there. Now, Serral does need to be careful because there's an attack up here, but he could also lose this base if Clem sees it. So Serral's going to jump on it again. He does have a couple bailings in the mix. Ooh, those Widomites are buried a little bit. Oh, he didn't get them. 
I thought he was going to detonate that bailing to kill the, the Widowmice there, but he didn't manage to do it in time, and they actually get a decent shot. Now the push in the main is being very annoying, or the drop in the main. Right? Let's see the target fire. Doesn't quite get all of them. One bailing connects, but still pretty good micro. Finds a way to be efficient with those Marines. Those Marines are barely going to win out on this fight, too. He's going to lead a few more links, which he does have, but the trades here, very, very good for Clem. You can see he's almost up double in the resources lost. Now, this is relatively normal for a TVZ. In a TVZ, the Terran is supposed to be ahead in trades. I would say this is a little more than you're supposed to be ahead when it's basically double. Uh, I would say usually like 30% ahead is where the Terran is supposed to be. And yeah, this is what Clem is good at. That these trades are getting worse and worse for Serral here. And now he has all these Widow Mines set up. Admittedly, these Widow Mines in the back are very low. If he gets a flank with a bailing, he could do a lot of damage here. Now he still has 11 bailings, but it's not that much. Clem is doing a fantastic job here. Serral has a lot of units on the right side that he might want to bring over. I think Serral is expecting a split push. Now really good micro on the Zerglings, by the way, taking minimal damage from all those mines. Look at that. that that is beautiful and now he's going to be able to kill six mines and that is a big victory now there's a mine drop here killing 11 workers by clem serral had his units here he didn't expect a mine drop through the middle and if you look at the supply clem is just going insane how is he up 50 supply serral making 22 drones at once but this is not looking great guys we are getting very close oh he was trying to target the bailings there we are getting very close to clem being basically on match point now uh wait i don't think did i even explain the format of this i'm not even sure if i did to be honest so uh, God, I really should have done that before, huh? Maybe I should just <laughs> re-edit the intro or something so I can explain it. But anyway, I'm just going to remind you guys, all seven maps are played. Uh, they all, they both start with 300 bucks, and every map they win, they get another 200. So there's potential here for Clem to win $1,700 and Serral to win 300 if this was a 7-0. So even if it's 4-0, it could still end up being a 4-3 and they get paid evenly. But this is uh, going to be a little frustrating for Serral here. Now the Bailings are getting some good connections on the left side. Right side is also being cleared up. And I feel like for the first time in age, we had a nice trade for Sero. But look at the units lost 4,000 advantage for Clem. Nine more drones. How does he keep getting so many drones in those freaking widow mine drops, man? That's crazy. Uh, whenever I try those, I swear they hit like a drone that goes into the extractor and it doesn't do any damage. But Clem just doing a fantastic job. Still finding himself 45 supply up. Now, it is a pretty big map. It is not easy to finish a game on this map as Terran against Zerg. Or, well, I want to say any faction. Any I was going to say faction. I've been playing too many other RTSs, guys. Any race because it's... Yeah, it's big. You're not going to get across very easily. All these bases are on the high ground. They have a ramp that's very difficult to break. Now, there is a Liberator and there's only one Queen. Here. Cyril's going for the attack, but this feels a little bit all-in in a way. He's sending everything forward right away. No creep. If he loses this trade, I don't think he'll be able to recover, but the trade goes well enough. That's perfect. Same time, he has units on the left side too, waiting for that. And Cyril's handling things really, really well. Like, Clem had a fantastic start, obviously. Parks his Queen in this area very nice. Going to be able to kill the lip. Clem started off super well, but the recent defense by Sarah has just been insane. Like, both sides, Widow Mines, Liberators were being 50 supply down, and he's managed to defend it. And I think... I mean, Clem is still up in supply. He can still try to go for a death push, but he might start thinking about going to the late game now. Like, start adding some ghosts, a bunch more command centers. So far, he doesn't have that many command centers, only going up to five. So he's still probably behind in production here. Now, this is not an army he can attack into. He can be efficient, but... He's definitely not going to win here because the army by Serral is pretty big. Now, let's be careful for that Widow Mine over there. He does kill all the Widow Mines. does lose all of the Bailings, though. He only has a couple... Oh, he does have a decent amount of Bailings in the top. Man, these guys are too fast. I can't even observe this. They're always attacking in two places at once. Kind of reminds me of the good old days when Innovation was the best player in the world, 2013. And they were always just attacking both places. And now, Serral is going to do pretty much... As, well, a second attack of the game, I should say. Cancels the Command Center, which is nice. And it looks like he has enough units to escape here, though. Like, those Marines would die to the Bailings if he stayed around. Still trying to drop to be efficient here, but in the end, he's still going to lose his Marines. And now, after the dust is settled... So the dust is never going to settle between these two, to be honest. But after the dust is semi-settled, I guess I'll put it that way, Clem finds himself roughly 30 supply up. Now, there might not be enough bailings on the left side. Like, he has an absolute crap ton of Zerglings, I want to say. Almost 100. But you need bailings. Zerglings don't usually trade super efficient. He does get a really nice surround. Those units killing both Zerglings as well as Terranu. That mine's going to go hard. Yeah, you can see that coming. That definitely hurts. And here we go. The late game transition I was talking about. Ghost Academy is going to go down as well as a couple extra command centers. Has sensor towers as well. And this fifth base is not something Sarah really wants to let up. If he knew this was here, he would try to kill it immediately. But the planetary is going to finish. Look at this. Clem has freaking five Marines here and he's still trying to get bailings for free. 
you're like just just back off and be human man like collect your army and then try something again but no this is clem and he's always going to try to be efficient in every way he can i one thing i expected to see but i haven't really seen yet is the liberator harass unless i somehow missed it with my observing but these liberators would be amazing in harassing like one here one here now Cyril's going for a really big flank he is bailing some both sides clem running away at the perfect time that with of mine gets a fantastic hit and now Cyril, i Think he, okay, I was going to say, I think you should back off. It looked like he was going for the surround for a second, but he did back off in the end. Now, obviously, Serral being Serral still has enough units here. Is he going to be able to target those bailings? No. If he got the bailings there, he would have killed everything, and I think that would have been game, but Serral uh, still managing to defend there. This is actually, for me... I I'm not really a Zerg player, right? Like, I play Zerg sometimes, but this seems like the hardest about Zerg to me. Is in particular... Oh... Both a big wind of mine and big uh, bailing hits. Now, Sarah's going to push forward. I thought he had to back off again, but he's going to push forward here. But what I think is really difficult is always having enough bailings on each side. I don't think it's that hard to split the Zerglings, but always making sure you have just enough bailings morphed on each side to deal with those attacks. You really need bailings, by the way. It's it, that, That's the thing about Zerg. Bailings are so good. Like, in my opinion, bailings are one of the best units in the game, but... The moment you don't have enough bailings or it's like an awkward fight, then you're in trouble. And here, there's the Liberator Rast that I was talking about. What is Sarah going to do against this Liberator Rast? He can't really send just two queens because they will die to the bio. Also can send his links and banes. And now Sarah or Clem is going to be able to grab an economic lead having that fifth base set up. And it looks like Sarah is fed up with taking damage. He's going to go for it. And there you go, guys. Clem takes a 3-0 lead against Sarah. That is absolutely brutal. 10k resource loss difference. And this was even a good Zerg map. Is, is Sarah going to be able to bounce back are we gonna win this is 7-0 i don't think so but are we please no that would be kind of devastating but let's find out all right here we go game number four on dragon scales and i i just have to say guys how freaking good is clem like what what what, what is this like who it, it, you know it, i mean it matters i was gonna say it doesn't even matter if Sarah comes back and wins 4-3 obviously it does but who the hell goes up 3-0 against Sarah? Like, why is that a thing? Like, how does that even, you know, how does that even happen? Looks like Clem is going to exp uh, expand or fall on the low ground again. Sorry, I was... Like, I've been talking so much, and these plays are just, are just making me dizzy here. But Clem is going to fall on the low ground again, which I really like. Now, as always, the intro is in the bottom right, playing for Liquid. Or playing for Team Polar Bear. You guys decide. It's Clem. And in the top left, really needing to make something happen now, it's Sarah playing for Team Basilisk. Or no. I think they... I always hear Rotterdam talk in the streams that they just want to say Basilisk. No Team Basilisk, no Basilisk Gaming. He's just playing for Basilisk. I think that's what I'm supposed to say. I didn't ask them before this. Maybe I should have. Okay, it's Basilisk. Just Basilisk, guys. You just cross out the team or the gaming, whatever I've said in the past. Now, Clem is going to go for an extra barracks again. Um, this does not necessarily... Excuse me. Not necessarily have to be a 3 Rex Reaper. This could totally still be a 2 Rex Reaper. Kind of the same build he did in game number 2. But without the proxy barrack. It could still be either. I think 2 Rex Reaper is more popular than 3 Rex Reaper. You get like a little bit of pressure. But you're not that committed. And then you transition into Hellions. But, but we'll see. There's also so many... I mean, I would know, right? I said it in game 1. I would know as the Reaper Master. But there are so many versions of 3 Rex Reaper you can do. You can make the 3rd th Rex really fast. You can make it after the Orbital over here. It's it's hard to tell. Now, judging by the fact this is a Depot, this should now be a 2 Rex Reaper. Unless he figured out another version of 3 Rex Reaper where you get the 3rd Rex super late. I, I don't think that's the case, but we'll see. Now, Cero going for a standard opener here. Uh, as to be expected. Now, what I expect from Cyril is that he is probably going to be the one to change it up. Like, if you're if you're up 3-0, like, this is something I... It's really, really tough to deal with. I, I play some Rocket League. Um, I have it in Rocket League 2. I had it in StarCraft. What happens when your opponent or opponents in Rocket League's case are up by, like, too many goals or maps is that they just get so confident that they just... They don't really care about you anymore. They, they just do whatever they want. And that's when people play at their best, you know? When they're just confident, they just go with the flow, they, 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 they're not scared of taking risks. That's when things get really, really hard. So Cyril, I feel like, needs to do something drastic to get back from this because a 3-0 deficit against... Yeah, the best TVZ player in the world, pretty much. That's it, it's 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 ugly, right? Like so, something needs to happen here. Now there's only three Reapers built, so the pressure is not going to be crazy. Uh, Cero has delayed his third hatch. I do think that Clem might be in the head of Cero a little bit. Like this is 
maybe something he wouldn't necessarily be scared of normally but now he's he's playing it very safe there's like there's no third hatch yet he's scared to lose it to the reapers but in reality it is just a 2x reaper like this is a small pressure guys if anything he kills two drones and, and he leaves and that's it right but sarah is he's taking it very serious he's going up to four queens going up to 10 zerglings he hasn't made a third base yet and i i think he wants to now okay what is this double reactor i'm not gonna lie guys i i don't i don't know if that's on purpose or not a double reactor i mean if the factory was next to here i would believe it because then you you make heli you, you take one of the reactor for helians another one you make marines from but here yeah that's what i thought okay i'm glad i was right yeah that that's you dude if he just invented the dankest build ever after doing that really cool proxy in game number two i, I would have just been mind blown so okay that is gonna cost clem i think it was about 30 seconds or maybe like 20 reactors take long to build i would say probably about 25 seconds um and i i like the opening for clem because sarah was like a little bit slow on getting the transition or maybe getting uh, the read on the fact that it was only gonna be three reapers uh, but now, yeah, I would say things have evened up a little bit. Maybe it's even good for Serral because the 2-Rex Reaper is supposed to do a little bit of damage. It didn't really. And then combined with this mistake, I would say Serral slightly ahead. Um, but yeah, well, one thing I also wanted to bring up is that it's pretty hard to decide. This, this is funny, something I just noticed. It's pretty hard to decide who the best TVZ player in the world is because the best Terran player, if you ask people who it is, people would say Maru. He gets the best results frequently in any kind of tournament, be it world championship or domestic, right? But when it comes to TVZ, it's kind of funny because Clem, out of any Terran by far, I think, has the best record against the best foreign Zergs. Foreign meaning non-Korean in this context. So basically, Serral and Rainer, like he has a good win rate against them. Sometimes he even dominates. Not always, of course, sometimes he gets dominated by Serral, but there has been times where he dominates. But Maru against Serral is not usually pretty for Maru. But then on the flip side, Clem struggles a little bit more with the Korean Zergs. Like, Maru really dominates Ragnarok, for example. Uh, has a decent... Re well, against Dark, he's relatively 50-50. Maybe he wins a little bit more than he loses, but Clem struggles against Dark. Uh, doesn't make playing against Ragnarok look that easy. So it, it's pretty hard to decide who the best TVZ player in the world is. I think it might be Clem, but then Maru also has his arguments, and it's, it's hard to tell. Now we have a Roach Warren from Serral's side. That's the switch up that I really wanted to see. Roach style is a completely different style from Zerg. So he's not necessarily going to go for an all-in like he did in the first game. He is more likely going to get 1-1 one, one, and then either hit a really big 1-1 one, one Roach timing or go into Lurkers. Now Clem is going for a drop. Serral has not seen this and... Serral has enough units to defend, but if his units are not in position, you see, he's going to have to run back. I, I think he's going to be okay. Really good drone pull there. Like, pulling him towards the queens and roaches. Does lose pretty much two roaches right from the back, does, or straight from the get-go, so that's pretty rough. But doesn't lose any drones, and in the end, that is going to be a successful hold. This build by Clem does feel very clean. I have to admit, I was never really a huge fan of the Turex Reaper, but... Clem in this game kind of makes me feel like playing it because the, the build looks clean and gets the drop fast, the upgrades, the five racks, the third base. It all looks pretty good. Now Clem is going to see his tank here. That's a very good position to shoot those Urglings from the high ground. Good harassment by Serral as well, of course. And here we go. There's the 1-1 one, one Roach. I always find it very scary when people build their upgrades this far forward. I think it makes sense because if, if you're playing Roaches, you're supposed to be very strong in the fight. If this army is here, you're you're probably dead already. But it's it still has something scary, right? Like, what if you just lose your upgrades? He pushes, it kills your one one, and then I guess you just die. Uh, doesn't sound pleasant. Now, Sarah is gonna choose to take the base in the corner over here. Uh, makes sense. I feel like this one is just a little bit too risky to take. There, there's also always this struggle when a new map comes out. You decide which base you want to take you can take like the linear base or you can take like the triangle base and they both have their advantages i think terran for example oh this base the roaches are a little later guys roach speed is not finished and this base is going to be cancelled i think if he stims on top of it yeah he can transfuse that i mean first of all he's not on creep is he gonna i think he's gonna go for it right he's not gonna yeah exactly good he could have cancelled it again actually there i don't not sure if it would have been worth it but he could have but good decision there um creep is looking pretty good in the middle as well but as I was going to say, the triangle base is pretty good for Terran because if something happens in your main, you can just lift your units that are at your third, put them in your main for Zerg, 
unless you're playing Mutalisk, that's just not that nice. So he wants to make sure he can cover everything by the ground. Not quite enough roaches here. Oh, that is brutal timing. Look at the upgrade size. 1-1 one, one finishes for Clem, but 1-1 one, one for Cyril is like 10 seconds away. And he might get it cancelled again. I don't think so. No, it's going to be saved. That's good. Another drop in the main, but we know our Cyril now. He is really good at defending at multiple places. And Cyril already going for Infestus. Here you can see he's definitely not going for a timing attack. If he was going to go for a timing attack, there would be no Hive, no Hydra, then no Infestus, just pure Roach Ravager go through the middle. And judging by Clem's position, it could have been a good idea. I mean, he has his tanks very safe, but Cyril is going to go for Lurkus instead. Uh, I am a little bit worried about the thing I described earlier, though, like the overconfidence part when you're winning. Like, Clem is just in his element, man. Like, he's so fast, he has so much momentum, and uh, I don't know if Cyril is going to stop him in this game, to be honest. Now, here, he does have a good amount of units against this, but I don't think he saw this attack on the right side coming. Guys, there are no Ravagers. He's going to morph them now, but they are going to take a while. That has been nerfed recently, and he's going to find the eggs immediately, I think. Oh, there are a couple fungals, I think. Do they have fungals? Oh, that's a really good fungal by Cyril. And he's going to be able to save uh, those Ravagers. Yeah, fungal doing an amazing amount of damage. And that's what's going to be able to uh, help him be able to keep this base alive, I should say. There's two tank siege in the back. But Cyril has enough to get on top. I do think he used a lot of his bios already. The bio is doing really well for Clem, but it's not over yet. Like, I think Cyril has enough units coming in. He's going to be able to kill the tank and the marauders. And in the end... Pretty even trade. Uh, you could say it was good for Clem, maybe. You could say it was good for Cyril, though I think killing two tanks is always really important. If you're playing the Roach Ravager Lurker style, you don't want to go up against like 10 tanks, right? So even shaving the tank going down a little bit is very good for Cyril. And I think Clem, even though the trade was okay, he might regret losing those two tanks later on. Now, Cyril's playing very aggressive here. Okay, looked like he was going to go for it. Maybe he could have, but I mean, rule of thumb as a Zerg, if you're 100% sure and you're not on creep, don't do it. If you're on creep, you can try a YOLO now and then, but if you're not, uh, you know, probably not. Zerg on creep is definitely significantly worse. And now the lurkers are going to come out. The upgrades for the lurkers are on the way as well. It's a very important thing, by the way. Like, lurkers very often in games look absolutely insane. And then people make them themselves. They're like, oh, I'm going to rush these on lair. They're going to be so sick, and then they kind of suck. Uh, that's true. Lurkers, they're absolutely fantastic when you have the high upgrades. If you don't have the high upgrades, they, they are very underwhelming like you're not going to be super excited though okay i was going to say one fungal and everything there is dead so clem has to be very careful he's going to counter attack with some links and uh, i don't have a lot of upgrades i think this is actually kind of nice for cheryl seeing that army go here uh, he's trying to take the middle base which yeah this is going to be hard actually if you look at this map guys the layout of this map it's not it's not easy to take a little base if you're going up against siege tanks, right? Right now it's four against four. As Zer Ooh, that's gonna hurt. Yeah, Lurker Spines hurt against Marines. Oh my god. I think 12 Marines just disintegrated there. It is very painful. Uh, but yeah, it's very hard to take this extra base. You want to be ahead in base as Zerg. Right now it's four against four, and that's not something Cheryl's gonna be happy with. He does kill the sensor tower. Oh, we're gonna play aggressive. Oh, okay. I do like this though. There's no ghost on the field yet, I believe. And you really need ghosts to deal with lurkers. I think tanks, they're, they're okay, but simply not that great. They can get bile down, and this is a fantastic attack by Cyril here. I think the attack is getting big enough that I should probably zoom out a little bit. Upgrades are 2-2 against 2-1. Looks like Clem forgot one of his upgrades. Now, the ghosts are coming. Let's see, he's going to try to get his tanks closer and closer. Lurkers have a lot of range, by the way, so you really need to be careful with the tank positioning. And now Cyril is going to run away. That's a very cool way to recruit, retreat, by the way. He unburrowed his lurkers one by one, so he couldn't get jumped on as soon as he unburrowed all of his lurkers. <gasps> We're gonna see dropper lords. Oh, I love plays like this. That is so cool. We're gonna get massive lurker drops in the main. Mo or no, maybe even zergling. Zergling drops with adrenal glands are would be incredible. Would be really nice to have an overseer here, by the way. Like this, this is this is one thing that always annoys me when I like play as Zerg, but I do. I always do that wrong myself, or if I see Zerg play, like, please make an overseer clear of the mines. The mines are so important. He's actually gonna go for the lurker, lurkers and Link. Six lurkers, 16 Zerglings. Adrenal Glands is not quite gonna be finished, but the lurker upgrades are. Okay, um, I have to say, oh no, the Widow Mine's gonna see it. Oh, that, Cyril's gonna be annoyed at that. He, he might, he might give his monitor an annoying look. Oh, you gotta get out of there, Lucy. Two lurkers instantly. No, four lurkers. Cyril, be careful. That is so freaking painful. He might even lose a fifth one. Five lurkers go down instantly. Six lurkers gonna die as well. And this one widow mine turned this entire thing into a disaster. That is very, very, very painful. Especially because he's down 0 3 already. Like, this is not looking great, guys. That was six lurkers going down. He only has three left. And I was expressing my doubt before that happened not because he could get caught that was not why i was just thinking 
since there's already a bunch of ghosts out now it's eight maybe back then it was like six or something if you have a not super overwhelming lurker count then the ghosts are fantastic against him cyril's coming in with the flank but that is not a big enough army he loses the investor and okay the fungals were definitely worth it though he loses the investor energy to the emp but he got the fungals off and the fungals were amazing he is gonna lose the investors though and probably the lurkers and now he has to back off i think there's just not enough lurkers here guys he needed more lurkers which he lost earlier now he does have a couple more lurkers reinforcing in the income is looking pretty decent for cyril so that's good he's gonna lose a couple overlords here which not actually sure why they were there, but they were. Now, this is something that roaches need to be, or ghosts need to be careful of. Ghosts are really good against almost all Zerg units, I want to say, besides investors and bailings, I think. Um, but they're never good if they're being attacked directly. So, even like 20 roaches attacking 10 roaches directly, uh, 20 roaches attacking 10 ghosts directly, sorry, the roaches are going to stomp the ghost. Like, you never want to have that happen. And yes, even roaches, so you need to be very careful with that. Uh, I think ghosts are pretty good at basing, attacking zerglings, but besides that, maybe um, Mutalisk as well, they're also light, but besides that, not that great. So he's going to go with... If, if these get caught again, I, I would probably cry for Serral. Now he's going to make Bailing Speed... Bailing speed is a slow upgrade, guys. I can say this from experience. Bailing speed is a very slow upgrade. He's getting caught on, but it's only ghost, so he can pounce on it. Keep in mind, guys, if the ghosts are here, they're not going to be in the main to defend against the lurkers who are hitting right now. The, the thing is, four lurkers are not that threatening. I mean, if the zerglings were there, it would be a lot scarier. Serral's doing his best to get an attack here, but yeah, I, I, I really feel bad for him, guys, because that... Just that one moment of the Widowmine seeing the drops and Clem staying on top, killing six lurkers, that really changed everything. I feel like he was doing fantastic up until that point. Now, he is doing a great job of keeping the momentum. He kept one lurker alive, which doesn't see... Oh, actually, I, I thought I thought oh, this one was the only one left here. Uh, but he did keep two alive, but one in the Overlord alive, I meant. And it could be useful later on. You might not think it's a big deal, but I, I can guarantee you exactly. Clem has no idea that it's still there. Now, Serral's attacking at the front, which seems all right, but there's no bailing speed on these, and these Liberators are not going to die to two Hydralis, so he has to be careful. Now, I am happy that he is going for the bailing speed because he'll need it later on, but... Yeah, Clem has five bases and a lot of ghosts now, guys. This is usually where Terran shines. Terran does not want to be equal and bank and supply with a Zerg. That is just, it's always a bad situation for the Zerger. Now, this fight is very hard to follow from the, from, from the top view. So I'm going to go to the side. It's not enough Bailings. Bailings are... How much gas is that? Like, huh? He's running 1,600 gas a minute. Oh my god, that's crazy. Now, this lurk attack is pretty good. He's going to kill some units. And man, I, I have to say, I love seeing Serral play these kind of games. Like, normally, I would have maybe loved Zerg playing Mutaling Bailing. That was my favorite. But I feel like when Serral plays these Roach Lurker styles, I, I, I like, honestly, most of the time, I find the Roach into Lurker kind of unimpressive. Whenever I play against other Zergs playing this, it never really felt that great. But when Serral plays it, he just... He makes so much happen that other Zergs wouldn't like it. Really, this might be my favorite Serral style, just Roach into Lurker. And I freaking hate Lurkers, <laughs> so that says a lot. Now, Serral's going to attack here. There, there are no ghosts here, guys. The Lurker's just going to be able to walk forward. There's enough Hydras to kill the Liberators. He does need to target those, though. The, so far, the Hydras are just attacking the Bio. Let's see. Please kill that Liberator. The Serral the Liberator's going to kill everything. Okay, he goes down. The Command Center goes down. There are so many Lurkers here, guys. The Ghosts can't even get close. And it was an awesome move by Serral. 63 workers left. And Clem doesn't have that many Orbital. He doesn't have enough scans, guys. There are Lurkers everywhere doing damage. And he doesn't have infinite scans. He just lost another Orbital. Clem has... Two orbitals? Only two? Oh, no. Okay, is it... Wait, is it... Yeah, that's the third one. It's going to be a fourth one, but it's just... Yeah, he's, he can't... Wait, can he even land that? Or is that on top of the... I think he barely can, right? Yeah, he can barely land, but these lurkers are doing freaking insane. And this gave Serral so much time to get back up. Start making bit links and bailings. Uh, he's making more... He's going to go up to 14 lurkers. Now... Yeah, I mean, this was all awesome for Serral, but I do have to express my doubt. First of all, Serral did not really... Sp Red creep during this time. I think mostly because he, yeah, he lost most of his queens earlier on, so he only has inject queens. This one could totally spread some creep, but without creep, playing Zerg is really hard. And Clem now has 19 ghosts. I think what you want to make against this is a couple more investors. Potentially get burrow so you can sneak up on them and then unburrow and then fungal them. And then roll in with bailings. Like lurkers are fantastic but against 19 ghosts this is actually really funny please shoot the ghost they're, they're right there man please <laughs> Cyril <laughs> no, this is so stupid Cyril 
Jeez. Like, they would do so much damage to the ghost, too. But Sarah's obviously preoccupied with the lurkers everywhere. There's one here, one here. This one could kill the ghost. And now he's going to attack again at the front. And there's not that many ghosts here. Uh, he is getting some snipes up, but the links are getting on top of them. Really good parasitic bomb. Those medivacs are going to take so much damage and force Clem to split even more. The bailings are getting close to the ghost, but it doesn't look like close enough. And Sarah does lose a lot, but he has the lurkers in the back. He still has this one. Wait, imagine if that planetary dies. I, I can't imagine. Oh, no. Guys, is the planetary gonna die to one lurker attacking it over and over? Wait, oh my god, he pulled away the SUVs to stop them from dying, but almost didn't repair the planetary. There's still lurkers here too with the drops, man. The multitasking by Serral is just beautiful. I do have to say, I don't think it's quite enough yet. Um, and I say that mostly out of... Oh no, he's getting caught. Clem is not looking. Oh, he does have enough though. Oh, parasitic bombs? Yeah, really big parasitic bombs on the medevacs. He's gonna lose. Okay, the medevacs stay alive for now. That's important because Elsie wouldn't be able to fly away and then he's in trouble. Those queens could kill a ton of those medevacs though. Like, I think Clem needs to get out of there right now. The bailings might hit otherwise. Okay, he doesn't quite lose a medevac and that's really nice. But what I meant is, Serral's doing fantastic. He definitely got ahead. But I would have loved to see one of these planetaries die maybe to a big bailing run by. Now, oh, he lost the bailing nest apparently. I... I I guess it was in the main. Didn't really see where it was. Uh, but he lost the bailing nest. I mean, Clem right now is starting to dip very low in supply. Oh my god, that was... This lurker has 16 kills. <laughs> that is not okay. Poor Clem. One lurker here would be awesome, by the way. But what I was going to say is killing this planetary with a bunch of bailings. It's a questionable strat sometimes because you... Um, it's very expensive. You need like 20 bailings for that. It's very, very pricey. It's like 500, 500 or something. But then Clem loses the position and doesn't get the opportunity to... Now he has six command centers or five, I think. Uh, he can make a lot of SUVs and get back fast. But if one of those bases dies, it's suddenly a different story. Now, Serral going in with a massive army. Those ghosts are so in so much trouble. Okay, the ghosts are ready. They're trying to go away. That Parabomb is disgusting. It's going to kill a bunch of the medevacs. Two go down. Two more on red HP. And the lurkers are split. That lurker's not even seen by the scan. He needs to burrow those lurkers as well. There we go. He still has bailings alive. Good parasite or a blinding cloud. Sorry on the units. And Clem is losing ghosts. And I have to say, guys, this game is not over yet. But I want to applaud here. I'm not sure if you guys can hear it with my mic settings. But I want to applaud for Sarah because this, this is just a freaking beautiful game. This is the kind of Zerg play I like. I don't really like the, you know, get ahead and aim move with one big army and win the game. That's not super exciting. But this game was just a masterclass by Sarah. Lurkers everywhere. I feel like he was pretty far behind. Remember, guys, he lost that drop. He lost six Lurkers in a drop. And Sarah does it. What a freaking beautiful game. I'm so happy with this because... After that, it was just a disaster. It was really unlucky. The mine saw the lurkers. It looked like it was going to be a 4-0 for Clem. I mean, it wasn't over, but it was looking pretty bad. But just amazing multitasking with all the lurkers, the drops, tenacious. It was amazing. Beautiful game by Serral. He brings it back. And the series is not yet decided. All right. Game number five is on Babylon. And I don't think I mentioned it yet. Or maybe I mentioned it in the intro. I don't remember. But I convinced them to play a game on Golden Wall. Now, I'm not quite sure if you guys... Uh, remember that map, but Golden Wall is my all-time favorite map. It created the craziest, best games ever in my opinion. So I'm super excited to get that going. So currently, we are 3-1 for Clem. But in the bottom right, spawning for Basilisk. I was almost, almost going to say Team Basilisk. It's Zero. There you go. <laughs> Basilisk GG, it says. That's probably their website. And in the top left play for Team Liquid, we have Clem. Now, what are we going to see this game? I mean, the last game, I... What would you take from that? Like, I, I used to be a pro player. I like to kind of dive into their mindset. If you're Clem, you're probably feeling quite frustrated with that. And it, it, it sounds crazy. Oh, we're going for a pool first again. Uh, because, you know, Clem is winning 3-1. You're like, why would you be frustrated? It's because Serral played a different style. Clem got a lot of stuff for free. And he still kind of got owned. And that always puts you in a frustrating, uh, frustrated mindset. It's kind of like... Well, if I got owned in this case, can't he just do this four times and win? Like, it's it's really not that easy. And Cyril is probably thinking how he can recreate that kind of thing. Or sometimes people just like to play the best. Cyril does seem like a kind of... Um, he just plays the best build per map, you know? Maybe he doesn't necessarily adapt in that way. Maybe he just plays the best strategies. Actually, I should actually ask him about that. But um, anyway... It's going to be interesting to see. Like, if I was Cyril, I'd probably just play Roaches again and go into Lurkers. Because that, that, that was a vibe. If I was Clem... I don't know if I would do too much different because, after all, I'm still up 3-1, right? Now, 
I'm kind of wondering why we're going for a pool first, I have to say. You can tell this is a very specific build because he's not mining that much gas. The link speed is going to be quite late. So what is it for? Does he just want to scare Clem or is there like a particular build he's afraid of? This, I imagine that wanted to go ahead to make a third hatchery, but then he saw the SCV or something. Now the Overlord saw nothing was going on, I imagine. Uh, just looked like a normal hatchery. Uh, I'm not sure what he checked for here. Maybe he was checking just to see if there was like a depot here, or maybe he just didn't want to risk losing the Overlord. He sees the Reaper now, and he's going to go out with the drone to take a third hatchery pretty fast. Uh, I think it was just a safety pool first. Maybe um, he was getting tired of getting owned by Reapers. And yeah, this is kind of what's annoying as Terran. Like Clem saw that it was a pool first, now he sees the third hatch, and then the Reaper's gonna come across. Exactly. But initially, you kind of have to keep the Reaper back. So something Zerg can do, for example, is run by six Zerglings. And then, yeah, I mean, just imagine what happens with six Zerglings here. You're gonna have to pull SCVs to save your command center. If you don't micro them perfectly, you're gonna lose four of them, and you're gonna be very sad. But he got to check on the third. Very well done by Clem. Uh, and yeah, I think it was maybe just like a little mind game, like a little switch up. I don't think there's something we need to read in too much. Now, Link Speed is going to take an absolute eternity to finish. So that is one thing that's going to be maybe a little bit annoying. But Kem is not doing anything aggressive here. You can see he's just going for a 30 CC. And now he's playing a completely normal build. There you go. The last time I said it, he went for a proxy starper. Now he is actually playing a completely normal build. The Reaper hasn't been able to do anything. And that's completely logical because he had to pull it back. And the Queens were already finished. So... Not quite as much action on the Reaper as usual, but that's okay. Now, I am wondering what Clem's standard build is. I said Serral is a typically very standard macro player. He really likes to play late games. Clem also really is. Like, I've, I've seen series where Clem... I think it was against Rainer that I watched. Like, six games in a row, he just played, like, 3cc Cloak Banshee. Like, he, just, he was just vibing with the macro build, and he just did it every single time. So, I think what we're gonna see now is most likely Clem's build that he could repeat every single game in a series. And I'm kind of going to guess it's Banshee's because he does really like Banshee. It could be anything from this point. Okay, there we go. He's going to switch him over, meaning it's either Banshee or Raven. Um, he could also have made a Viking, uh, could have made a Liberator, for example. There's so many options here. To, you can you can pretty much make anything. Well, going for a Raven probably sucks after the auto turret was nerfed. Like, trust me, guys. After the most recent patch, which I keep forgetting when it was, like January or something, auto turrets there. <laughs> They're very bad, okay. Now, they're, they're good at in harassing if there's nothing around. You can still kill workers with that, but you try dropping an auto turret next to a unit, you're you're not going to be excited about it. it it's, it's, even Zerklis, they would just cut through it like it's paper. It's it's, it's not pretty. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go for Banshees here. Uh, Clem seemingly still has the most standard build. Something that could be the case, this is not something I'm necessarily aware of recently, is that maybe this is either a good Terran map. If it was a good Terran map, Playing Banshee makes sense because Banshee is the safest option. You probably won't die to roaches. It could also be that this is a popular map to go roaches on. That's option number two. Option number three, he expects Serral to go roaches after the last game and it's because of that making Banshees. Those are all really valuable, uh, valid options. If I had to guess, I'm actually going to say it's number three. Like, I, this doesn't look like a map that's particularly amazing for Terran. It kind of just looks like a normal map, if you ask me. Um... If it was a cheese, he would have done Banshees faster. So I think he just kind of wants to prevent Serral. Or maybe not necessarily prevent, but kind of tell him, hey, if you go Roaches, I'll have Banshees annoying your Roaches for the rest of the game, so you should probably do something else. And that has something to do with the adapting I talked about at the start. So this is Clem's adaptation. He is going to cancel that fourth base. It's freaking Hellions in a Banshee. That shouldn't be allowed. Uh, the Overseer is going to come now. I mean, there's enough transfusions, so I don't, I don't think there's really... Well, I mean, I say that, but the Queen's transfusions are walking away. He could kill that Queen. Cyril, your girl. Oh, no, he didn't transfuse it. Wait, is that going to die again? With the second match, he could kill it again. Oh, my God, it gets denied again. The Overseer is finally on the way. This is doing way too much damage because all the queens are on the top trying to defend the hatchery. Now a Banshee almost goes down. This queen... Oh, no, Clem is locked in. Does go the right way in the, in the micro. Kills another queen. He's trying to get to this mineral line to get the best surface area possible. In the end... Like, I, I barely know what I was watching. Like, two Banshees and six Hellions, or eight Hellions, I believe, were doing so much damage. They killed so many Queens. The Knight, the Hatchery, I think, three times. But then Serral came in with the Lynx from the flank and killed everything, basically. And ma oh, besides the Banshees, but they're very low HP. So, and behind all of these guys, Serral made 75 drones. That, that is a crazy one. Look at his base. He can't even carry all of them. He has nine too many drones, which I guess he's going to transfer up here. But since the fourth was canceled, he can't use them to mine yet, which means for now, Clem has the economic advantage. It's, it's really cool to see 
those small things, those small differences that after you talk about the game after it's over, you kind of have forgotten about them already. They do make a difference. Now, Clem is also about a minute, a little bit more than a minute, maybe like 80 seconds ahead on those upgrades, which is really good for him. He's going to give him good timings. Definitely less meaningful against Bailings than against Roaches, though, because Bailings, you know, they care a little bit about upgrades, but but not that much, right? Like if a Bailing hits you, you're dead. If you kill the Bailing before it hits you, you're good. And I guess the plus one attack for the Marines is going to make a difference there. Uh, but for now, Cheryl definitely has enough units to just keep scaring him away. And this is the most standard game I can imagine. We are actually going to have the most standard game these guys could play against each other. And now I'm curious who's going to win this one. Um, I mean, on Ancient Cistern, it, well, I don't even know if it was a better situation. Because Clement for the proxy starport and it failed. This attack was also not wonderful. But Clem, yeah, he kind of smashed him in that game on Ancient Cistern. I believe that was game number three. So I'm going to have to favor Clem just from this series so far. But realistically, I mean, it's still Cyril. You saw what he did last game. Who knows what he could do in this game? Now, one one is gonna finish. Clem hasn't started his two two yet because his armory was slightly late. That's actually the if you, if you pay attention to it, I bet that's the most common Terran mistake. How how often is an armory too late? It's probably very often. Doesn't matter if you're literally watching the best TVZ player in the world, or me, or you. If you play Terran, everyone forgets their armory. It's just you just have to. It's almost like it's our duty. Kind of like forgetting combat shield. That, that, that's something that should be illegal because it's so bad for you. But it's just like <laughs> it just happens. I don't know. Now good defense here. Has the Overseer as well if he needs it. Oh, the Mystic. Cyril didn't target the low HP Banshee, though. This is something Clem is really good at, by the way. Always getting infinite value with these things. Like, he went back, repaired them, killed six more drones. Now he's going to repair them again and go back in. Unless he snipes it with a queen or something. Now, the Hive by Cyril is very fast. Clem is playing pure Widow Mine. Um, which makes sense because he's going up against Ling Bane. I kind of thought he would have had three tanks. Normally, they make three tanks, but he only has two. So he really went for Widow Mines pretty fast. That's probably because he did make two extra helis. He made eight instead of the standard six. So there you go. Now, the creep rate is looking decent. Clem is going to be pretty good at denying that throughout this game. I, I don't think he's going to be crossing this line uh, pretty much. I think he's even going to go clear it now. Exactly. There you go. Two groups. Now, th this always looks funny to me. When Zergs get their hive really fast, that their adrenal glands is faster than their 2 2, and it's a hive upgrade. Well, it really feels natural that you have like hatcheries, like the 1 1 tier, and Lair is the 2 2 tech, and then higher is the 3 3 tech, right? But here, uh, I guess not the case. Those. That Widow might did a lot of damage. Okay, I, I thought he was going to be slightly today on picking it up, but there we go. Hydra then started too. Not sure if those are going to be for just Hydras or just Lurkers. I don't think it's going to be both. I mean, it, well, that's not completely accurate. So if he's going to play Hydras, inevitably he's going to play Lurkers at some point. But it's a completely different style to play Hydra Ling Bane and Lurker Ling Bane. But I don't think people really play Hydra Ling Bane that much anymore. So it would make a lot of sense to me. Oh, that's another good trade for Sero, getting all those Widow Mines uh, pretty early in the fight. Um, I, I would say it's probably going to be Lurkers right away. Like, I would expect the Lurker then to, build, uh, to be built the instant that Sero remembers. He's also taking a lot of gases. I guess we'll just see if he's going to make the Hydra upgrades right away or not. Uh, you might probably get those anyway. Oh, this... I'm, I Okay, I mean, I'm not sure if I'm a fan of this. Parasitic Bomb is a very expensive spell. Using it to kill two Banshees that are literally just tickling your units. Yeah, I'm I, not sure if I like that. I mean, you can always consume more energy. But let, let's say he needed them now, right? Then where are the Parasitic Bombs? Now, Cyril's going to go in again. Cyril has jumped on his army every single opportunity. Mines get decent hits. Not amazing. Uh, but it's really hard to trade against Ling Bane when you have to run away from your mines. You want the mines to get big hits and then you get the trade-off. But so far, Cyril's smashing it, guys. Cyril's playing fantastic so far. And there's five Hydras and the Lurker then. Seven Hydras. I imagine they're all going to be morphed into Lurkers. Um, Clem has been playing with more Liberators than I normally see. So I think a couple of Hydras would be nice. It's like making... Oh, that those with the mines could pop off. Here's how... Let's go. Wait, that... They didn't even fire at all. Okay, those killed a couple Zerglings. The Banings did hit, though. Okay, this was a very bad fight for Clem. Widowbys go down, too. And, yeah, I mean, this is a big turnaround, guys. In in the last game, they played a full macro game. Ancient System, Clem was all over the place. But Serral hasn't let him do anything this game. Like, has Clem done anything? He killed six workers. That is that is not enough against Zerg. You want to kill, like, 20 at least. Uh, but Clem is just... He's not getting anything done, guys. And this is a beautiful Serral Masterclass. Now he has Lurkers. He's going to go for the drops instantly as well. Not quite five this time. He's definitely not going for the, the six Lurkers, 16 Link drop again. After what happened last time. Uh, but I think he's going to do the same annoying thing. He's going to burrow a Lurker at every mineral line. If I was Clem after the last game, one of the main adaptations I would make 
is to just build a turret everywhere. Like, turret, turret, even in the middle, you know. Turret, turret. Oh, everywhere in between the bases. Turret, turret. Okay, there's the, oh, that's a good turret. Oh, he's listening. Wait, Clem, are you listening to me? Blink twice if you're listening, because that, that's a little sus. No, just kidding. But that is, yeah, really good missile. Look at the timing on that, too. Now, I guess Cyril's probably sending his other overlord on the other side. I don't know where the other overlord is, because he has two overlords, most likely. So here's... I don't think it can pass. Oh, no, there's a Widowmine. He might lose it instantly to the Widowmine. Yeah, it's gone. Oh, how does that even get out? What is that? Well, it's going to die. Ima imagine if this lurker got to burrow over here and harass that mineral line forever. Now, he's kind of doing the same move as last time where he's going to go really good EMP there on the Vipers where he's trying to drop lurkers in their main and kind of burrow them everywhere and attack at the front. Fantastic defense, though. Clem realized where his weakness was last game uh, and he denied it instantly by putting Widow Mines and the turrets up there. Um, and yeah, he held the front really nicely as well. Cyril is at 84 workers, so he's going to be very aggressive. But Clem is definitely going to be playing a better defensive game these guys, they adapt in every way. Clem adapted in the strategy. Cyril knew what mistakes he was making in Ancient System and started playing better. And now Clem is going to set himself up to play a better late game. Already has the defense here. Honestly, I would put even more turret because I wouldn't be surprised if Cyril tries to drop like 60 circles with Adrenal Glance at some point. But for now, all right, we're kind of in a little bit of a stalemate here. All their attacks have been deflected. Has a single attack worked this game? I don't think so. The Hellion Banshee didn't work. None of the bio attacks have worked. This attack by Cyril didn't work. They might just have to go for like a macro game, like without attacking for once. I mean, that sounds crazy. These guys are just, they go, go, go. You know, they always want to attack. Now, this seems like a pretty good attack by Cyril. The Widowmine drags were amazing. There's no many Widowmines left. Splits, as always, really good by Clem. And Cyril now has to back off. Does he? He only has two lurkers. Is he deciding to stop making lurkers completely? That'd be a little bit crazy, right? Like, he doesn't have Veilings here. His army is literally Hydras. He has 21 Hydras, 2 Zerglings, but well, now he has 46 and 3 Bailix. That is not uh, the best army I've ever seen. Now, he does have one Lurker here denying the base. I, I would love for him to do the same thing as he did before. Like, what he can do with this game to kind of recreate the effect is get a Lurker drop on the bottom. The main base he might expect, but a Lurker drop here, it's also out of range of the turret, similar to one here, right? Now, Cyril is going to go through the middle again. Drags the... Oh, those ghosts! You have to pick them up. Okay, Clem does pick them up. Parabomb on the medevac that picked them up too. And now Cyril's just gonna chase him. Cyril is really brutal with the frontal attack this game. Like he... You know, it looked for a second like he was gonna play the exact same style that he was doing before. Where... He just, like, sent a lurker everywhere and had a one big attack. But now he's not even sending the lurkers anymore. He got defended once and he was like, yeah, screw that. Not even going to uh, keep doing that anymore. And he's just attacking with his massive army at the front over and over. Clem does have 13 ghosts now, though. Think about it, guys. 13 ghosts could basically wipe 13 hydros off the map instantly. So you need to be very, very careful for that. Now, I do think I would like to see the lurker moves again because they were so good. There is a lot of liberators here, though. Let's see. This lurker is going to be annoying. Clem does not have that many orbitals. I think he has about five. Four or five. I can actually use this tab. Let's see how many is it. Five orbitals, uh, which is decent. But against Lurkers, it's not usually enough. I learned from Spirit that you kind of want to go for eight orbitals. Because then you have a consistent stream of scans. With five orbitals, if you have to scan for Lurkers all the time, you will run out. Now, Cyril's going in again. Yeah, I could instantly see this top half was not a good idea. Vipers have not quite been used. Oh, the fungal doesn't. White hit the mark, actually. Kind of misses the ghost and hits a couple marines. And now, Cyril's in a little bit of trouble here on this base, guys. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just flabbergasted by these guys. Because how do they adapt that things look worse, but then they play so much better? Some of oh, those snipes were disgusting on the hydras that they turn situations which they would have lost in a previous game into a win in this game. And, it, yeah, it doesn't seem like Cyril's getting enough damage done himself. Like, these liberators on top have been insane. I wouldn't mind seeing, like... A little Viper Hydra squad, you know. I feel like Cyril should try to do more damage. Now, obviously, it's a little late here, right? Oh, can he get a fungal off? No, the EMP on the Infestor. This is a lot of units by Cyril, though. Those Liberators are going to fall. It's just enough Bailings to deal with them. No, the Medivacs are going to die, which means all the Ghosts are going to die as well. Oh, no, he lost the Overseer. Or did he not have one? Dude, if he... If Cyril did not make an overshare and it didn't get sniped, he's kicking himself for that because he would have killed all those ghosts now. That was a really good trade. Uh, and yeah, it looked like he was in a massive trouble, but he did survive, which is nice. What I think Cyril needs to do is just go here with two Vipers and his Ling Hydra. Kill the freaking Liberators and tanks. And then all of a sudden, you can start harassing this again. Because it's just... Clem feels too safe. He has all of his units in the bottom besides a couple Libs and one tank here. And... 
Yeah, it, it's, it's really hard fighting against the Terran's full army, right? Like in the last game, he had lurkers everywhere, split all over the place. Clem could never get his stuff together. But why is that widow mine there? I, I only just I saw a dot on the minimap and I was like, well, okay, I guess it's a liberator that got there, but why is there a one HP widow mine? Just chilling there. And then the spore moves. Oh no, the really close is actually gonna burrow. Ah, oh, fantastic micro though. Burrows the spore as well. And I think we might see a very big fight in the bottom. Yeah. Cyril's going for... Oh, the Widow Mine's gonna hurt, yeah. He's going for a massive surround. He has one fungal. Look at this fungal, guys. Okay, he gets the fungal, and now he has Parasitic Bomb, too. This entire army by Clem is gonna die, guys. Clem has a lot of supply. Cyril can kill that base very easily because Clem's entire army is here, including, like, what is that? Eight ghosts. Okay, I mean, obviously, he wanted to play careful there. Uh, Clem's economy is starting to look very good compared to Cyril's, by the way, so Cyril has to be... Yeah, he needs to get something done. He needs to get either this mineral line up safely or get the base on the bottom back because this is looking a little rough. The lurkers are in an awkward spot. The scans, oh my god, three lurkers just blow up instantly. The mine's gonna get some good friendly fire. Vipers were barely not in reach to abduct their parasitic bomb those back. And now Clem, uh, I want to say, is finding himself into a commanding position. Cyril's gonna go to the middle, but I, I don't think he has enough here. There's so many ghosts and Cyril calls it and Clem... Wins the series, but it's not over because there's still a couple hundred bucks on the line. But fantastic games by these guys. Hope Sarah can bring it back for some more dollars. But let's see. Game number six on the way. Game number six. Now, currently, if my math is correct, I think Clem is at $1,100 and Sarah's at $500. Obviously, neither of them is going to complain about that, but I can tell you guys. Uh, I explained this before when I did the Elaser Clem show match. Even when it's like this, and you're like, well, he already lost, doesn't really care. These guys are really in it for the pride, okay? If Sarah would lose 6-1, he would feel infinitely worse than if it ended up being a 4-3 series, right? Let's see, how do I do the score? Uh, oh, wait, he's going for the build. Guys, he's doing it. I'm just looking at my keyboard like a pleb because I forgot the hotkeys to put the score. But there we go, 4-1. But here we go, this is the build. He's going to do the build, guys. He's doing the 15-15 build popularized by Brazilian Zerg Eric that I talked about. He's going to go for the extractor trick. 15 hatchery and i have seen this was actually the map where they played that awesome game that i talked about the map where sarah had like the road drops everywhere and he was putting creep down there was another extractor trick and then i think it's an overlord right and then the pool and the biggest advantage of this i think your queens are like 10 seconds faster your zerglings are faster too so you can have a hatch first Excuse me, that was an awkward time to have a burp. Uh, you can have a hatch first and still have links out on the map in time before the Reaper. So your build can look like a hatch first completely. And then you still have links that are going to nibble away at the command center. And then there's a very specific follow-up that they have been doing, which is like a, a, an eight roach attack with like three queens in the... In the in, I was going to say a medevac because it sounds so absurd in an overlord. Uh, so you have to get overlord speed for it. And then either you attack them... Or you use the Overlord with roaches to put cre or with queens to put creep everywhere on the map. It's it's an absolutely absurd build, and I freaking love that a new build has been invented this late into StarCraft. One of the complaints I always have about StarCraft is very simply that Blizzard doesn't care that much anymore about us, so we don't get a lot of patches. Um, and new builds aren't really often invented. Very often it's like the meta builds and. Not much stuff is invented new, but I love that someone invented a new opener. And then the best Zork player in the world used that opener to beat the best TVZ player in the world in, I believe, the semifinals of the last Dream Act. That is so freaking cool. This late into Starcraft. Starcraft, how old is Starcraft? Like 13 years? At this? Wait, it's actually... I thought I was exaggerating. Now, Starcraft is like 13 years old, guys. Starcraft 2, that is, of course. Uh, so that's absolutely crazy. And this is exactly what I was talking about. To Clem, it looked like a hatch first. The hatchery was done. Uh, but I think he knows the timings because the hatchery was a little bit faster than it would normally be. Oh, is he, are they going to fight each other? Barely not, I think. I think they barely... Oh my God, they barely didn't see each other. And he's waiting. This is this is so, so freaking high level, guys. I can explain to you guys what happened here, right? So Clem noticed the creep was a little bit further out already. So he knew it was probably the build where he gets a faster hatch. Then you would think, why doesn't Sarah go in with his links? It's because his overlord hasn't seen the reaper. So they're reacting to like the smallest details between each other. And that is freaking cool. Now the link is still going to get a scout off realistically there. There's not really that much that's interesting to scout, you know. He's going to... Ooh, I was going to say he almost scouts that it's a third command center. But besides that, he just sees it's Hellions. And that there's a command center in the natural, which... It happens like 95% of the games. Well, I mean, in this series, it hasn't happened every single game. And we're going to see a lair. Okay. 
Is this gonna be the build? Hmm. I'm, get, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little nervous, guys. Yeah, okay, so he's gonna do the build. And the reason why I'm getting nervous is because this build, I, I, I've been hyping it up, okay? This is like the coolest build I've seen in ages. But Clem has played against it before. He didn't take any damage from the two circlings. He knows what he's up against. And I'm just afraid he's gonna shut it down. Now, this is a really cool move. Oh, is he gonna be able to block it? Barely doesn't, okay. This is a really good move by Zerg. This base has a rich Vespin gasser. It's two gases in one. So with this base, you can hit like a really absurd timing later on you can get lurkers really fast for example or maybe get the roaches up a little bit faster one one and speed that is for now it's not going to matter too much let's see i wonder what he's going to do here okay so clem i think clem realizes what's going on so he stopped making hellions extra early to get more marines out which are better against roaches yeah i think all these moves are really cool so far now Cyril has a lair but he didn't make an overlord to drop with. So it seems like he's kind of playing into the mind games a little bit. You know, like he's not doing the exact same build. But he's making sure it looks like it. Um, and yeah, I really wonder how Clem is going to react and what they're both going to do. So now Clem sees the roaches. It, there it looked like Sarah was trying to bait him into thinking something. Because he was there with the roaches. And then he pulled them back just as they got into vision. Kind of to make think... Kind of to make Clem think that he maybe wanted to hide them. This, I think this has no cloak, right? Uh, yeah, this Banshee is, this is literally the most... One Banshee, it loses to a Queen, by the way, pretty much. So it's, it's, not, it's not very threatening at all. And okay, so now he is going to go for the drop. But this is not the same drop. This feels like a very late drop kind of to fake him out a little bit. I mean, he has enough roaches to do a lot of... He is making a ton of them. Hmm... This is interesting. I love seeing new versions of the cool build as well. So I think he's going to put three queens. How many queens? I think five, right? Yeah, he's five queens. I think he's going to put three in the Overlord. Or he could put roaches in the Overlord and just try to spread creep on the map. I, I feel like he should have made more queens, though. Maybe he's just going to go straight at the front. I instead of necessarily going for creep spread, I think he's just going to try to break him. I mean, he has a big army. And Clem has these four This is a really good move by Clem, by the way. He's going around. He doors all of the roaches. And now he's going to drive into the base. Sarah obviously responding very well. Now Clem... That looks freaking fast on creep, by the way. Now Clem sees that roach speed is finished. This is too many roaches for Clem. Clem cannot hold this base. He does have the tank, which he needs to siege instantly. Roaches are trying to get in. He's going to drop the queens on top, which I, I am not sure if it's working out or if it's not working out at all because Clem is target firing the roaches the roaches are gonna die very fast the queens are already gone and I think Cyril just went a little bit too hard with this guys I think he just goes here kills the workers and I, I like the position but this it was not it I'm sorry Cyril I love the new move uh, and he has enough units, so he's going to be able to do a little bit of damage. But I think he could have done that a little bit better. Now, Marines and Hellions are pretty awful against Roaches at this stage. So the Roaches are going to trade decently. But he just... Yeah, he kind of wasted most of his attack. And now he's making another Dropper Lord. I imagine he's going to try to bring the rest of his queens for another all-in. But yeah, I mean... <laughs> I'm not going to like... <laughs> I don't mean this as an insult. I mean, you guys are not going to take it because you guys love me, probably. But... Um, <laughs> that kind of looked like the way I would execute it. I would get like super excited, just like, oh, I have an opportunity. Let's go for it. That, it looked like the way I would use it. Now, he does have a good amount of Ravagers. Tank is going to die instantly. There's still a lot of units here by Serral. I think there's more queens coming. Okay, Serral is still going to break this third. How strong is this attack that it can still do damage here? Now, here are the queens just to deal with the Banshees, and he's still going to get... The SCVs as well. Clem didn't see the Queens coming. So he loses the Banshee. Loses a lot of SCVs. And oh my goodness. Now it doesn't look like me at all anymore. Serral's back. It's him. But yeah. I mean we have to be careful here guys. Serral killed a lot of SCVs. He's up in workers. But he has zero upgrades. And... I think he has zero queens. I know it sounds crazy to say. I think he might literally not have a queen. That tank is going to live. That means Sarah has to back off. Oh, he had one more Ravager in the back that he didn't use. He wants that tank so bad. He wants to go for a bile. He does have some creep here. Uh, he's morphing more Ravagers. Clem is just going across, it looks like. Oh, this is... He has to cancel these. Yeah, exactly. That was going to cost him a lot. But I don't think Sarah has queens. He has... One queen per hatchery. No, not even. Now he has one queen per hatchery. It's it's not fantastic, guys. I have to admit. Sarah's production, it it, it sucks. L look at this. He's making, he's making a couple roaches at once. Ideally, as Zerk, you want to make like 15 at once. Now, this group looks insane. If Clem 
Leave these tumors. Oh, there's a rose up in the main. Oh, very cool. I like this follow-up. That's why Clem maybe came back. This is the kind of move I always talk about and I always teach my students. It's not necessarily about the damage. Look what Clem did. He came all the way back. Could have been dropping instead, but he got confused. It was like, oh crap, the attack is continuing. I'm going back. In the end, it was just a distraction. Killed three SCVs. Wasted so much APM in time. The only thing I would have loved is if he used his time to spread creep. Realistically, I think Sarah probably thought these tumors died because most terrors would have scanned for it. If he gets a tumor here... And here, and here suddenly he has amazing creep shred in front of Clem's base. And now Clem, very wisely in my opinion, mining this out, takes the other third base. Doesn't have to worry about clearing the creep here. Though I, I think he probably should still worry about it later on. Because, yeah, you don't want to get a massive amount of creep shred in front of your base. Now, yeah, okay, I thought this was going to be a normal drop. But he just is going to send those out in the two medivacs. Look at the unit move of my Serral here. This is the kind of foresight that most people won't have. Instead of sending everything here... Exactly. Oh, I love that they just proved my point about how great they both are. <laughs> he already sent the roaches in the main knowing that that was going to happen when he denied the units here. So, didn't take any damage. And right now, it's it's really hard to analyze this game because Cero, it was looking horrible. And then he came back with the last attack, which I don't know how it still worked. I guess his build is just insane. Like, it, it didn't look like it was going to work, but it still did. Looking at the situation of the game, though. I think you still have to give the advantage to Clem. They have the same worker count. Serral does have the rich cast, so... You could effectively say that he has three more workers. I mean, if that's such a big of a deal, I don't think so. Terran has three mules, which are roughly 10 SCVs, I believe. So, you don't want to be 10 SCVs or 10 workers ahead of Terran for it to be even. If we look at the income, looks looks pretty even, actually. Um, yeah, sometimes the Terran income spikes those are the mules. It kind of depends. Yeah, it's, it's roughly even, you could say. But... Clem has 2-2 two, two on the way, guys. Cero has plus one attack only. He's getting lurkers up. But what I'm afraid of here now is that he dies before he gets there. Now, he does have three infestors. That's really, really good. Without those infestors, I'd be very scared. With infestors, I, I have been on the uh, painful receiving end of this. But with infestors, there's always a chance of making some miracles happen. Because a fungal and a bio, guys, you, you're, you're going to cry. If you get fungal and a bio, you, you could lose 10 supply instantly. Worst case scenario, you lose the freaking medivacs. Now, Cero... Okay, I was going to say, Cero's going for a counter. I re Oh, that's a really good fungal. I like the counter. I did, wouldn't have liked it if he flanked. This move is very, very good. He's going to kill some high-quality units for cheap. And once again, guys, Clem is coming back. He doesn't want to deal with the fungal bio at the same time as a counterattack, So super, super successful move. And most importantly, guys, the Lurker that is 90% finished, and that's what he's trying to buy time for. He doesn't have money, though. I, I find this a very awkward Zerg game. Like, I love the way Serral's playing it. You know, the first attack, I wasn't a huge fan of, but that I, I love how he's playing it. But 61 Workers is not a Lurker economy, guys. It's, it's not fantastic. Now, he's going to kill a couple more SCVs, probably like two or three. Yeah, he kills two SCVs in the end. He does supply block him, though, which is nice. I think the best thing about it is that he's buying time. Notice that Clem is moving forward a little bit slower than normal because of that attack. Uh, but yeah, he really doesn't have a Lurker economy. I mean, Lurkers, you want to have a ton of them. You don't want to have two like he's building without the Hive upgrades. Now, the Bios were decent. He still has two fungals left, I believe. Two fungals on... Oh, he has... Where's the second investor? Oh, there. I couldn't even see them. Here we go. Big fungal. Now we can buy a couple of these tanks. Did he get this one? Oh, okay. I was going to say, Barry, that's always so frustrating. If you go for the Biles and you barely don't get it, that's a horrible feeling. So I'm glad for him that he got it. Not so happy for Clem, but I'm glad for him. And now he has Lurkers. There's not that many tanks here anymore, but four tanks is still good enough against three Lurkers. If I was Cero, I think... You know, with the all vision I have, I would probably move the Lurkers back. Well, now it's already a little bit too late. He's still going to keep them alive, though. I would have moved the Lurkers back and gone for a massive counterattack. Clem is taking an insane trader, though. I told you guys, Lurkers before the upgrades, they are just not as terrifying. They need the Hive upgrades. They need the range. Range just now finished. He doesn't have the Burrow speed yet, but at least he has the range. And the trades have been pretty decent for Serral. I feel like Clem kind of overstimmed a little bit. He was pushing forward so hard that his units were all low HP. And now Serral's going to be able to get on top of some of the tanks, kills one of them. The economy is still in favor of Clem. He's surrounding the Lurkers, but there's a lot of units by Serral. I'm not sure if I like this 100% by Clem, but he is still kind of doing it. Another tank gets biled on the left side. There's a couple Lurkers left, but this base is undefended. He can't really defend that, guys, because of these tanks. He's trying to get on top of these tanks. He is going to kill both of them, and that is a good move. But does he have enough Lurkers behind it? The Roaches are clearing everything up, man. This game is also so amazing again. Behind, between these guys, it's just is beautiful. But yeah, like I said, he doesn't quite have a Lurker economy. These Lurkers are so expensive. And Clem is doing a good job trading. It's not, 
is not the best traits ever against by Clem, but it seems just good enough. Keep in mind, though, Clem is all in here, guys. Okay. If this is a, if, if there's a fourth base here, you 100% say uh, that Clem is winning this game. But here, his economy is going to get worse and worse than Cyril. He's going to have to lift the fourth base. Well, guess what, guys? Never cleared the creep. He's going to have to fly it all the way over there or take time to clean it up. Now, I think Clem probably does have... The opportunity to finish this game still. But he needs to be so careful here, guys. Another good fungal. There's a few more Hydras. One more Lurker being morphed. And the income, it's, it is actually in favor of Serral. Well, it's so even. But I would give Serral a small lead. Second Lurker finishes. And, man, I can't believe Serral is playing a competitive Zor game with 57 SCVs here. Three more barracks going down by Clem. Really 100% all in. Two Roaches here doing a lot of damage too. Look at the income now, guys. There's no mineral income from Clem. And he can't push this yet. Guys, if Serral wins this game, that would be freaking insane. Clem is going to go for it, but I don't think he has enough here. There's three Lurkers. Now, okay. Serral's overextending here, guys. I don't think he wants to move forward. I mean, it's so freaking close, but I don't think he wanted to. And yeah, that fight was not quite it. Loses the Queens as well. Now, those Roaches did fantastic. Clem's still not mining because he attacked at the same time. And now, Serral has one Viper out, so he'll be able to abduct the tanks. There are Liberators, though, so he needs to be super careful, but the Viper came at the perfect time. If I was Serral, probably make another Viper. Here we go. He's going to abduct one of them. Uh, he needs to kill it, though. Picture the targeted Liberator. He has a target, and the Clem is pushing forward. There's tanks. He didn't get the Liberator, and the tanks barely do it, and what a freaking game between these two. I feel like Serral should have lost ages ago, but then he brought it back, and then Clem was really far ahead, and Serral almost did it, and it's fine. Fun. I feel bad because they're playing such good games. But now, guys, it's time for the best map of all time. Golden Wall, game number seven. Let's do it. All right, game seven on Golden Wall, guys. Look at it in all its glory. Now, this map, it's it, it's had a very, very rich history, you could say. So, uh, wait, can I even put five wins for someone in the best of seven? Wait, let me see if I can actually do that. Oh, you can. Nice. That. Probably shouldn't work, but nice, I guess. Um, oh my god, this, this map looks freaking massive on the minimap. And this, this map is very, very strange. If you've never seen this map before, I feel bad for you because this map is freaking beautiful. So first of all, you can mine out the back and expand in the bottom half of the map instead of the top. Then you have these gold bases that you can take from both sides. And they're also very vulnerable from both sides. You can mine this to open the entire map basically connect the bottom and the top bar and obviously the other side has the same and this map has made for some freaking awesome games like i think the best maps typically were played on this map it's people took a while to figure out how to play on this map so at the start people had some balance complaints but why i thought this map was so good why i think this map is actually the best map of all time because not just the games were entertaining by the end of this map's lifespan in the map pool still no one knew who the map was good for and that is a sign of a very good map. I feel like very often these days we have maps that are like after one month we're like, yeah, Terran vetoes this one, Zerg vetoes that one. It, that's a little bit boring, you know, when you already know in advance this map is good for who. But here you just, on this map you just don't know. It depends more on the player than anything else. And that's crazy. Uh, one game that I remember that I played was really awesome is I mined out the back. And I just, I played a weird style where I just expanded the entire bottom of the map. And I started attacking my opponent here. And then in response, my opponent took the entire top half of the map. And it was just, it was an absolutely absurd game. That's so cool. And you can only see it on Golden Wall. Now there's a couple ways to play this map. Like I said that I remember. A very common one is just to take the gold as your third base for Terran. And Zerg to expand really far in the corner. This kind of base is very good for Zerg to take. If you look at the map, this base is the farthest away from the Terran base. So this taking this as a fourth, super, super safe. You can't really be tank pushed there. And then go, uh, Terran has the advantage of getting the gold. Now I hope that either of them decide to do something with the bottom half of the map. That would be awesome. But anyway, spawning in the bottom left. They play for Basilisk. It's Serral. As far as I get a bottom right, play for Team Liquid. It's Klim. Who has been freaking crushing it, by the way. Currently chilling at $1,300 in this show match. It's not bad, guys. Not, not bad for, uh, you know, an hour or two playing, uh, playing a few games of Starcraft. Really not bad. Hope I can continue doing this with your uh, help on Patreon, of course. And let's see what the Reaper can do on this map. Hope Serral doesn't lose that drone. There we go. Of course he doesn't. Why did I even doubt him, guys? He hasn't lost a Zergling yet either. It's always funny, by the way. The, the Reaper is not supposed to kill anything. But then when it does, programmers will always be like, ah. GG, that's it. You know, we killed a drone. It's over, guys. Let's leave the game where our economy is just in shambles. Now, the third CC is being built here. Once again, Clem going for uh, a completely standard triple CC start. Sarah also playing this as standard as I could think. I do have to say something I noticed that is a very interesting trend. I'm not sure if that's 
just the meta now or the way Sarah likes to play, but the third bases are going down a little later and link speed is very fast. Normally what Zergs do is they cut gas a little bit when you get to like 60. They take the third base, the third, third base, sorry, super fast. And then Link Speed finishes like four minutes. But Sarah's consistently taking late third bases and really fast Link Speed. So, I mean, I suppose he can kill the Reaper by surprise. Uh, he can deny the scouting completely. But it's, th it's still a pretty interesting trend. Like, I didn't notice players doing this before. And Clem seemingly very happy with his play today. Going for his standard build once again of going for the Banshees. Now, the most interesting thing here is definitely which third he's going to take. This, I, I believe it's 10 minerals, by the way. Is it? Okay, it's 20 to mine it out. Let's see. If, if, I would expect him to take the gold. Um, if he takes this one, that would just... That would be kind of disappointing, you know? Like, for a Zerg, it's great. For a Terran, oh yeah, come on. Like, at least take this base or take the gold base from behind. Even better. Oh, that would be beautiful. I mean, maybe you don't get the gas, but still beautiful. Uh, but I'm very curious to see what base he's going to take. I, I'm, I'm guessing that it's going to be the gold. I think gold base would make sense. Serral's going to take this one. And then they're probably both going to try to use the bottom side of the map to harass each other. Uh, Serral's going to... Wait, actually, I didn't really think of this before. But one thing you can do... Yeah, he's going to take the gold. Nice. You could technically send two Bailings here and det detonate them manually to kill the SCVs here. This is not a gap, by the way. It looks like one, but it isn't. So you can... You can put two Bailings in the corner, detonate them, and kill all the SCVs. That, that's an awesome move. That really is an awesome move. So he's going to go for Cloak this time. I think the last... Was it the last game where he... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Last game with Neo Humanity where he played uh, Banshee without Cloak. Now Cloak is on the way. How many Queens do we have? We're going to go up to nine Queens. Okay, so Sarah's playing it safe. Nine Queens is the safe Queen count. If we're not playing particularly safe, you usually go for seven. So uh, Sarah's playing it safe. I think... Wait, guys. He doesn't have a Spore here yet. You need to pick a Spore, my friend. Oh no, this could be a disaster. He only has a spore in the main, I believe, which is which is nice. Okay, he's making a spore now. Clem is waiting for Cloak to finish. Okay, this timing is I mean he saw it with the overlord. Okay, that's very cool queen movement there. What he did there is he kinda came from the top to force Clem to go down. So he didn't fly away to the natural and see there was no spore. That's a really cool move. Now the spore is going to finish in time. Uh, and even though they were honestly a little late, he's not going to lose a single drone, which is fantastic. And now he knows where the Banshees are too. There are six aliens out on the map. After that, he's going to go for uh, a bunch of Marines. He... Okay, that's interesting. He hasn't gone... Normally, you go for tanks right away. What is he planning to do? Now, so far, I'm, I'm happy. They're, they're play they still remember how to play this map, guys. Cyril is taking this base, and Clem is taking the gold base, and they're playing exactly as you should play on this map. I mean, you should you should play like me on this map and only expand in the bottom of the map if you want to be cool. But here, they're, they're in it for the money, you know? They're not necessarily in it to be cool. So there you go. Uh, they're definitely very cool, by the way. Just kidding. So what, what you can do when taking this base is you can go for an absolutely brutal three base semi in. You can make your se six, seven, and eight barracks super fast, way faster than normal, and just hit straight through the middle. And Sarah's gonna play Mutas for the first time. Oh, I love it. There we go. That's also a really cool way to play this map. I'm really happy that we're gonna see Mutas from Sarah here. Uh, I do, guys. I love Clem. I love Sarah, but I, I am kind of cheering for Sarah here because, you know, they're both making a good amount of money anyway, but 6-1 just, it feels a little brutal, okay? And Serral is playing exactly the way I want him to play. Uh, for Clem, I I think I would have preferred it if he went for tanks instead of Widow Mines, but it also makes sense, especially, did he scout the Spire? I don't think he did, right? No, Clem hasn't seen the Spire, so maybe he's expecting it because he sees all the gases that's very possible maybe he just thought mutas were always, always going to lose that banshee mutas were always really good on golden wall so i'm just going to pretend it's mutas you don't want to make tanks against mutas just so you guys know um and yeah both of those make sense but i, I oh no Cheryl misclicked a little bit oh that was a disaster he missed one bailing explosion to kill the widow mines and they both fired now it's, it's still totally fine like i said this is the big advantage of Golden Wall for Zerg, is that all their bases are just stuck to the edge of the map, all on the left side, so it's just so hard to attack. You have to walk so far to attack. And then Terran has the advantage that it's easier to control the entire bottom side. You can, you can drop tanks here. You can actually just drop tanks there uh, with 12 Marines and just start shooting the gas and stuff like that, you know? Now here, Sarah going for Muta, so Clem does need to be very careful with this drop. Clem has 1-1, Serral doesn't, and this is scary here, guys. This move by Clem, normally I would say it's fantastic. When you play against Mutas, oh, he needs to be careful of that man. You have to be really careful of this. Oh, he lost every single Marine besides one? What is that? 
What, what, what side are you on, Widow Mines? Oh my god, that is disgusting. I was gonna say, he needs to fly away before the mutas catch him, but yeah, don't worry, the Widow Mines already caught him. Oh my god, he has one marine left, guy. He even stopped moving the meta. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they both left. I, I, I swear, if I had like player cameras, I guarantee it. Please, bo both, guys, both pay attention. Clem, you're losing your stuff. Oh no. Yeah, this is why it's so good to play Mutas. It's so tempting to just do drops and drops and drops on this map. But then if you go for fast Mutas, you're in trouble. And now Clem has to take it easy. Keep in mind, guys, Clem took the gold early. His mineral income has been insane. He already has a fourth base. He can play a macro game from this. Um, and I kind of think he has to, but this map, it's good for Zerg in macro games, guys, because of the things I've explained. And it's going to be pretty scary. Cyril's now mining out the back, so we can start taking these bases. Uh, but Clem is better than normal because of the gold base. So normally, if this is the early game, you're just like... Maybe you just leave, you know, <laughs> you're like, frick this, <laughs> I'm done with this stuff. But now he has a fourth base, he has 70 SUVs, he already has Thors on the way, he's gonna be able to survive against Mutas, he's already starting to repair by building a lot of turrets. He's probably gonna build a ton more, by the way. Um, just so you guys know, if there's like 20 Mutas on the field, <laughs> turrets, they kind of die like paper, so you even want like 4 or 5 per base. Now, it's not 20 Mutas yet, but it's, all, it's already 14, that's a lot of Mutas, guys, the turret's barely gonna finish. Now, if I was Clem, I'd probably put the Thor in a medevac and just kind of fly it around. Now, so far, it seems like he's going to be fine, though. He has a couple of Widomites spread everywhere. That one barely doesn't get a shot off. Those Widomites could easily kill those Marines and the Widomites, but he doesn't want to get a bad trade. And, yeah, this is when the Golden Wall starts being a little rough for Terran because he didn't get any damage on the start. was a disaster. He lost two drops to his own two Widomites, and then he lost another two drops to the Mutalisks, and it's, yeah, it's, it's been a tough start, you could say. It's been a tough start, but still. Now, Sarah's starting to take the bottom. If I was Clem, I think I would also start... The oh, that's I didn't even see that with a mine myself. That was very well hidden. I would also start taking the bottom bases. Because if you take the bottom base... I, I just want to look at the action here. But if you take the bottom base, you can start protecting the gold from behind with a Thor as well. Like right now, Clem is the one that's stuck on the top side of the map, right? But if you have this base too, and you just have a couple Thors in the middle, you kind of protect both the gold base and this one. And that would make it more comfortable. I feel like if Clem takes this base as his fifth, he would just stretch himself out more, and that would not be very pleasant. Now, Clem does still have the upgrades massively in his favor. He's basically a full set of upgrades ahead, which is about two minutes. Now, he does have a good amount of defense back home. And now, Clem, what he's doing here, he doesn't want to fight. I mean, Clem usually wants to fight, so I'm not sure if that's true. But more than anything, he just wants to make sure the creep doesn't get out of control. Like, he doesn't want creep to be chilling in his gold base at some point. And this is the first time in his entire series we're going to see this move. Sarah is finally rich enough. He finally has not been battered to death by Clem the entire game that he can make enough banings to kill the planetary. And uh, it's... Hmm. Okay, so I'm just going to give my two cents on this move, right? This move is typically very good. But the problem is, Clem in this game, he was rich enough to already have a... Please kill that. Okay, thank you. Uh, rich enough to already have a couple command centers. He killed a lot of SCVs, but the planetary is just straight away gonna get replaced by the command center that was next to it. I feel like this move is usually the best when the command center count is already a little bit thinned out. And now you can see, guys, there are so many mutas. There's, there's only two Thors. Two Thors are not even necessarily enough to deal with the mutas. Now, Cyril might run away from the Marines. Let's see. Oh, the factory is almost freaking dead. And Clem, I think he's had enough. Clem realized, look at the army supply, guys. 129 against 115. Mutas are not necessarily the best fighting unit. Cyril has a really good position, but he doesn't have that many bailings yet. Cyril needs to be morphing more bailings. He's doing a lot of counterattacks, but Clem, Clem is going quite all in with this. I don't think Cyril realized that he's going all in. Now, what you want to do as Cyril here is indeed buy time. But he, I think he just needs to morph more bailings. I mean, to be fair, Cero has so many bases, he can kind of let the, this side of the map go. These mutas are going to absolutely wreck this entire base. This base on the top was killed. Oh, he didn't lift that planetary. I think he might have tried to lift it, not realizing he was producing a planetary. Now, Tutu is going to finish by Cero. That's going to make these fights a little bit better for him. He did lose... Oh, those bailings went into the Marauders and the Thors. Oh, that was not the best by Cero there. Now, Cero is just making sure that he kills the entire economy. He's making a lot of bailings hidden. And this is very tough for Terran. I, I can tell this from experience and from casting that... If you're defending at home, it's really easy to at some point just walk into the bailings and not split enough, right? So, Cero is still maxed. He, he took some trades that were not the best. Oh, you need to be so careful. Guys, if the Thors are going to die, the Mutas are just going to overwhelm. I think this entire army by Clem is stuck. He's trying to reinforce just in time. You can tell he's stimming those Marines. Does he have enough left, though? That is so many Mutalisks. He's going to go up to 32 Mutas, guys. And I think Cero... 
I asked them in the lobby, let's see if you old hags still know how to play Golden Wall. I, I think Cheryl definitely still knows how to play Golden Wall. I think Clem also does. He just got a good color card by the Mita Zen. Yeah, his widow buys being perhaps a little more treasures than you would expect. Clem's entire army dies, and there you go. Cheryl wins the last game, bringing this to 2 and 5. Cheryl walks away with 700 bucks, Clem with 1300, plus the Patreon support. And this was just the beginning of these tournaments, guys. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. It was a crazy match. I think the score, I mean, Clem played absolutely fantastic. I was going to say. Maybe the score doesn't exactly fit because some of the games were freaking close and awesome. But in the first three games, Clem dominated. After the first three games, it was 2-2. The first three games was all Clem. Fantastic job by him. And this was awesome. Let me know in the comments what you thought. If you're still here, you've been watching for a long time. Get some rest. Don't forget to hydrate. And make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. And see you all for the next one. Adios.